Welcome back to another podcast by the Life Wide Open Fellas. Why did it's I say us. it like that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody but has ever referred to us the, as that. Yeah. We're Wait, the Sea Boys so on the other funny. channel. Over yeah. here we're the Life Wide, Wide Open, Open Fellas. fellas. Uh, this is actually our 50th podcast. 50. No way. Yeah, way. So, I mean, like, it, it's... Over the hill. Good job, yeah. guys. Wait, Good also, job, job, everyone. I mean, uh, quick question uh, right into it. Is Over the Hill 50 or 40? I feel Shit. like Over the Hill would be 54. Oh, okay. Or that's 52. Well, that huh? well, that's it's 52 yeah, weeks in a year. Yeah, I guess you're like, like that's oh. one year, you know, of posting. <laughs> Wait, what? No. no. No, Over the no. Hill is like a, a, a like statement 10. about age. Oh. <laughs> it's 10? I thought you were talking about podcasts. Talking about? Oh, oh, no, they oh. always say if you do 10 podcasts, then you're like okay. actually doing podcasts because most podcasts don't last 10. Yeah. Shit. So maybe I thought you were. No, you, we just, I was talking about age. I, yeah, you and I just, age. I remember. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I remember two having, different pages. There's been I've been to a couple different birthday parties where over the hill it's a forty over the hill. Like my dad's fortieth birthday was an over the hill party, and I was like, eh, why? Well, uh, yeah, it just seems too young. Kind of short man. At that point, he seemed really young to be over the hill. I know that's t- like technically the the top, but I'm fifty to me is that life expectancies yeah. are getting longer and longer. So like they just keep bumping it bumping back. It up. I mean, yeah. Well, I heard the other day that somebody projected that. By like at our age right now, we could live to like 140. That's awesome. What? Yeah, I don't know. It definitely was not a reputable, like a credible source. Is this like when Ken you got to be doing all the pulling out all the stops? There's no way I'm making it to 140, dude. And do you? There's no way. I don't think I want to because we would be on the cusp of like where we'd have to tr- like pull There'd out all the stops serious, to get to even right. past 100. Where like maybe people in yeah, another maybe, 50 years, a 140 might be. Uh, still old as frick, but like a hundred might not be. But like by the time if we hit a hundred, we'd be crusty as hell, dude. Well, I'm already on the right track. I've been pulling out all the stops lately. Yeah, you have some cryotherapy. No, it's it's hyperbaric. Sorry, hyperbaric. I chamber. have done that too. Yeah. yeah, how is that going? Uh, and explain what it is well, exactly. Yeah, and genuine opinion on it. I, yeah, I'm gonna give my genuine. So hyperbaric chamber. Joe Rogan's probably talked about this. I don't know. Um, it's basically. It's literally a chamber. I'll pop it up. I took a video of it today. It's like five seconds, but you'll get the gist of it. So if you're watching on video, you can watch that. But you hop in this this tube. It's like this glass tube, and it's like lock shut. It's basically like a cellar. It, when you walk in there, I feel like I'm in Stranger Things or like some kind of show where they're like... Yeah, it sounds like they're going to freeze you. Creating you people yeah. in like, you know, like with superpowers. Because you walk in, it's like kind of dark, and there's just people quiet. You're in this like blue... Yeah, like never based on like pictures I've seen, it doesn't look like a friendly atmosphere it, per se. No, it's fine. But yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's not if you're a classic, but... claustrophobic person, you would freak out. Like my mom could not do it. I was telling her about it. So, anyways, hyperbaric chamber, it's uh basically a pressurized they they increase the pressure and increase oxygen in there. Whereas like so it'll be a hundred percent oxygen uh inside that chamber, which is obviously good for your health because the more oxygen it's probably better for your brain, your and, heart. And you're just breathing it normal. Like you're just yep. sitting in Yeah, there. you're not really supposed to huff or anything like that. You know, <laughs> like breathe heavy. Hold up. You're wearing a like a special suit? You can't. No, it's not really a special suit. It's just like a all cotton uniform. They don't want you Ooh. to. I don't know why. Okay. But okay. It's basically just a gown. Got it. Um, I wasn't sure if you were just in this like glass tube naked. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's looking at me. I'm like, come on. So if you were outside right now, or probably even in here, uh, the it's twenty one percent oxygen outside. Yeah. So you're not breathing in pure oxygen. Where they're inside that chamber, they pump it in and increase pressure. I'm not sure why the pressure helps, but force it in. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's on your in, increasing your oxygen intake. It goes through your blood. Your your blood cells carry it to all the different parts of your body, which can help and uh, be good for like healing. It's it's supposed to help for like concussions. They didn't know if it would help for me because it's like more of a post concussion. Like my problem is like post, but like if you were like someone new that had it, yeah. Apparently, they say that they have seen benefits. Don't <laughs> quote. I mean, I I haven't seen any benefits, but I'm a whole different situation. How many have you done? Seven. When do they usually start seeing any kind the of The dude change? literally, like, has been taught, like, the doctor there, like, he's, like, curious about me because I'm more of, like, a different case. And he always talks to me. He's like, how, how, like, have you seen anything, yada, yada? I'm like, 
I hate to tell you this. <laughs> yeah, man, it's like, is it like, tough to just be like, no, nah. no, I'm not. And and he just kind of told me like, like it's, it's kind of it, it's expensive to do. Yeah, that was, the that other was my thing. next question. So it costs. So in order to do it ten times, I've paid two thousand dollars. Okay. Which to me is I mean, expensive, yeah, and and on top of that, I have to drive an hour to go do it. Yeah. So I have to drive an hour, then I have to change, get in the tube, sit in the tube for tube. an hour, and then get out of it, change, drive back. So it's like a, a three and a half hour deal for me, mm-hmm. which kind of also interrupts my whole day. But no, it hasn't been helping me at all. But the other people that go there, besides for concussion people, uh, are like older people and uh I, I i think it's just ultimately maybe better for your health yeah i mean like it, i'm sure it it's good up, for you you know uh uh-huh. injury our grandpa yep. actually he uh suffered like some burns on his back his house burnt down last november and like his whole back his burnt. whole back was like third or maybe was it fourth there's a couple fourths like it was really really bad and he uh didn't want to do surgeries like he's just stubborn that way but also he made the right choice like would not do skin grafts. Wouldn't and, do anything. And they said, if you don't do skin grafts, your skin will not grow back and you're guaranteed to get infection. Because he wanted to yeah. go, he wanted to leave the hospital yeah. and not come back. And they were like, right. we, we can't let you do that. And he was like, I'm not doing that. I'm figuring out another way. And Ben was in the hospital with him. Yeah, it was, pretty, I, it was super uncomfortable. I was at the house he and he was sitting in the him. hospital and Ben was like, just texting me. And I was like, what's going on? What's going on? He's like, I don't know. He's kind of like grandpa's arguing with them. They want to <laughs> operate, but they want to like, help him. And, want, yeah, and yeah. he's not letting anyone touch him. And he's like, it's so awkward right now. Cause he was like, they were like, they, they sent four different doctors in and they were like, if you leave, you will get infected and you need skin grafts. Your skin will not grow back. And he was like, I don't care. No, like, he I'm, just, I'm leaving. he does not fuck with I get, uh, traditional doctors. Yeah, I, get, I and think I, he just doesn't, you what? know. Right, no, so actually, I get that. Actually, there's a I, lot of people I, I, like that, though. No. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say he said, he was saying, I don't care. He was saying, you're wrong. I guarantee it will grow oh, back okay. and I'm going to be okay. Okay. But wow. he was like, I should say, he was saying, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what, what I, I want to do. So yeah. like. It, which is, I mean, I wasn't surprised, but I, I was just like watching four different doctors come in and they were in like disbelief. I can't, I'm sure nobody has was ever crazy. told him that they're like told a doctor that <laughs> like has a third degree burns on their yeah. back that they're leaving tonight. So anyway, he, he left and then he yeah. got his own hyperbaric chamber. He, he didn't oh, get a own? hyper. No, he They're, didn't get a cha- So I don't think his is quite as, uh, I would just imagine it's not quite to the degree of the ones I'm going to like. His was like a, like a tent, some kind of oxygen tent. So basically, oh. I think you could pop it up in your own house. And I'm not sure exactly how it worked, but it was like, I think it was like $10,000. Which Yeah, I've, I've you seen know, it. It's, it's basically It's obviously like, not the same as that chain, <clears throat> but but it has his back has now healed. He it has been 1 year his his back is healed. I think there's maybe like a couple Obviously, there's some scars some and stuff, scars, but, but like they want to like do skin grafts right, off of wild. his legs, his butt, like all these spots, and put them on his like you know pretty a very serious surgery, and uh, he wouldn't let him do it because he thought he could, you know, he basically heal naturally, um, and oh. obviously doing a couple of the other things. There's other things that he was doing to help that, but uh, which ultimately That's proved impressive. them all wrong and and saved him probably. <clears throat> You know, Probably a lot of pain. Yeah, I mean, a lot it, of pain, and, I, and also you know, yeah. like surgery is pretty abrasive. I know I'm not a doctor, but right. like if you don't, you typically don't want to get surgery <laughs> if you don't have. to. If you don't have to, yeah, surgery is kind of like that last step. So it's like, if especially you can, when you're older, they knock you out. Yeah, yeah. The whole lot. it so, is. In, it's an interesting like, well, stigma around. Not really a st- surgery, just sucks. So it's like when you get injured, I'm not like always bummed if I get injured, but I'm bummed if I have to get surgery. You know, you're like, okay, they put you in a cast or whatever, you limp around or this and that. But if you have to get surgery, it's this whole other ordeal. But I'm just surprised that if they would have been like, you should get skin grafts, but like kind of one of no, those they situations, were like, you, they were like, you need, need them. to go to the ma- They wanted to like fly yes. him there that night. They wanted night. to send him to the burn unit. Wow. And helicopter he, him there. Like, and he so wanted bad, to go they were home. Like, we're going to <laughs> helicopter you to the burn unit. And he like, said, no. no, I'm going to drive home. <laughs> Was he not? Was he just like chilling him, through yeah. the pain or what? I think like, he, I got an, he was in a lot of tolerance pain. of pain. No, he was more, more pain. than most. And he had a lot of pride. Yeah, I, I, he, he wasn't. Pride's a hell of a drug, that's for yeah. sure. No, he, he doing and it. he was right. So you, 
you gotta give it to him. I, no I, I, I'm I'm very happy that yeah. it went that way. Obviously, that's just to that's give a his little situation though. Yeah, I'm not saying that everyone yeah. that has that yeah. should follow that or like take any of the advice. I it's guess it's different for everyone with every situation. But so, anyways, <laughs> he had one of those tents, and he said that he thought that really helped his back. Like it, and just you know, obviously, if you're have an injured part on your body and you increase oxygen flow to it, it's going to help. Yeah, it. Makes you know, sense. oxygen yeah. is good. Another thing too is he had COVID like two weeks prior to his house burning down. And like at post COVID you have like extreme, extreme brain fog. I don't know if you guys remember that or if you had that too, but it's just like one of the posts. I got it all the time. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we're all his, his like was super bad, pretty noticeable. And he said that that also helped him yeah. with, the brain fog and like kind of just like his cognitive. Oh yeah. That was another thing that there people go there. If they recently had COVID, they didn't mention that to me. Interesting. Yeah. So, but yeah. moral of the story is we'll, let's say we're all rolling up on 80 and we're slowing down a lot. CJ is going to be like, I'm just, man, you guys are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm like, we'll, we we'll figure out it out when we get old and CJ's just leaps and bounds ahead of us. I have actually started to, uh, probably it has something to do with Ken, but my health has become I become much more thankful for it each time I am not sick. It's kind of like the same on a really mini scale. When you get like a really stuffy nose and you can't breathe out of it, and then you can finally start to breathe out of it, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest feeling ever, and then you just start taking it for granted, and then you can't breathe through your nose again, you're like, this sucks. Yeah. I'm just trying to like... The classic. Take, just trying to be thankful for my health 24 seven because yeah. shit changes Dude, if, you don't, if you don't got your health, you really don't have a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Like that's probably your number one thing. It's health, weird. Cause I'm like, family, I get more friends. consciously thankful of it when people around me are sick. Not that's that what I'm I mean, like, yeah. ha ha ha. You know, someone's hurt or mm -hmm. sick, but you're just like, dang. Yeah. It makes you think yeah, about yeah, it more. Like, oh, Even I'm if le someone legitimately has a stuffy nose, you're like, thank God. I don't have a stuffy nose. Yeah. yeah. So Ryan, uh, what's your shirt say? I see you got a new uh, meme shirt on. It has a golf cart. I like that. I, I do. I actually yeah. ask you that because I now I can read it. <laughs> I, only, I only go golfing to practice Just drunk, drunk driving. driving. <laughs> Damn, that's a mint cart on there. That is a mint. That's it's a quality cart. That's a proper Yamaha, I think. Yeah. Dude, I've got like a whole stack in my locker down there of good I like meme it. shirts. And for so those keep of it you. Up on there, keep, keep your eye out for them. On yeah, the I love that And shirt. for those of you wondering, that is a joke. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a joke. Don't. Yeah, you can't get a DUI on a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, speaking of, I guess, new merch, we have a merch shop coming up this oh, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the 27th, Thursday at 7. Going live, we got a bunch of hunting stuff, a bunch of Halloween, I don't know, fall-type theme stuff. And, and we're also... Dope giveaway. Giving away a 1,000 Sportsman, a oh, camo one. like so like a, it. A utilities four-wheeler, yeah. This is I guess... In two days, if you're watching this right now or listening, you now know what the giveaway is before yeah. everyone else. Yeah, one of the benefits of listening to the podcast. But this is kind of like the one time a year that we do, uh, like, it's not all hunting themed. So if you're not a hunter, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. But there's like a, a, a portion of this drop that is very hunting themed. Obviously, if you look at Mike's outfit right now. And I'm not a hunter, but I think it's like some of the coolest hunting gear like all these guys are Yo, are big hunters. Mike's about to climb into the deer stand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this you look like it right now. Also, if if you order it right after the drop or super early, we'll have it to you by deer opener. Correct. Yeah, we gotta. Kind of uh, now shaking his boots. Yeah. Well, we we're gonna go. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> yep. hopefully. But uh, it, yeah, it's gonna be cool. It it is really interesting. Um, I'm sure there'll be some comments. I mean, not that this really matters, but there'll be some comments about, oh, you guys don't hunt. You guys don't really fish. Um. We don't spend a lot of our time doing that. We're still somewhat passionate about it. Somewhat, some of us more than others, yeah. but we can't do that stuff on YouTube. Like YouTube just doesn't like it. And we so, talked about this, yeah, a few yeah. podcasts ago. So it really sucks. That's that why we, we don't can't have show that. Video. Honestly, I think a, like a pheasant hunting video would be lit, and also so even fun. like a deer hunt, or yeah. even like you could go on some crazy hunts, and it would be It'd extremely be entertaining. Like it would be very much so worth the time because it would be such an awesome story and video. Yeah. And also a lot of fun too, but we could go hunting is, Sasquatch. I don't even. I don't think we'd get anything. I don't think we'd get anything. Yeah, dude, that, that would tried. that'd be a really sweet video to go like elk hunting, mm, yeah, or so moose fun. hunting in Alaska or something like that. I was actually just put ourselves balls deep in. It. I was talking to a guy at the bar the other day that loves fishing, and he was asking 
us all about like, oh, have you ever been to Alaska? Like you got to go to Alaska and go salmon fishing and halibut fishing and like fly fishing in the river. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well, we could probably do that for a video, right? Like you two, yeah, probably you do can fishing. do fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be a fun video. Go yeah, up to Alaska. I bet all we have like a stuff. Uh, lot of people listening from yeah, the Alaska, got a Alaska area. fishing plug. Yeah, that'd be a that'd be a good. That time would be definitely like the, the peak place to go. I think Mike and I yeah. did it in Michigan, and we like went out on like a big it was yacht it was boat, like a big forty foot boat, so and fun. caught like thirty pound salmon. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you're out there. It felt like you're in the ocean. You're in the Great Lake, but like yeah. it was that was cool. so fun. And so, like, I mean, I know we've got invited out. Um, you know, we're busy. It's hard to make stuff like that happen, especially when you don't know. Uh, planning a fishing trip, like we don't know exactly how that's going to pan out. Like <laughs> we know how a riding trip's probably going to pan out. But anyway, someone invited to do it us to do it in the Hamptons. Oh, oh yeah, which oh, would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would kind of be like 50% fishing and then just 50% living the New York gym lifestyle. Way. <laughs> yeah. It's our buddy that also... Eating at the finest restaurants. Like, comes well, who knows area. what goes on in the Hamptons, yeah. really? I have no I, idea. It I seems, seems like, like New York gym. I saw this, like, uh, someone, just like a, a meme or a rant or something. Someone was like, dude, East Coast people are built different, think different, act different. Everyone in the Midwest is kind of on the same page, and then we meet people, like, uh, out West that are kind of the same. But then, like, you know, Boston people and New York people, like, they're they're very different from us. Dude, I've, I've never really had that much desire to travel or go and see, like, different east? places. No, not oh. even to the East. Well, yeah, to the East, but, like, Europe or, like, South America or, like, anything like that. Every time somebody mentions studying abroad or something, I'm like, ah, that just doesn't really sound that fun. Hmm. But now, I don't know what flipped, but maybe it's just like so wanting to experience different cultures to be more like educated on different people. You know, I think we're so, well, I'm so used to just like living in our small little cormorant and kind of experiencing like the same thing. And obviously we've traveled, but like we really haven't traveled outside the united states or really outside like just going west west like, of the Missis yeah, mississippi yeah we've never gone east at all haven't been able to travel outside the country but like even experiencing different places like to our neighbors up north in canada i don't know that'd be I'm fun i'm so too. excited that we can go back to canada <laughs> yeah we've yeah, got we a go back to canada. trip lined up to revel soak i'm stoked for that I but think I think we should go to Europe. Like, that'd be a fun trip yeah, if, like, like, the I'd whole crew it. went to what, Europe. What would be, like, a good spot to go to? I mean, like, Greece, Paris, London, Some, Venice. Somebody needs to buy a Porsche, and we can go to Germany. And that seems like a big Ken thing to That's, do. Yeah. It kind of does. Doesn't it? Like, Ken like takes a European luxury. delivery of your Porsche? I, I think I'd feel pretty comfortable traveling, like, a way abroad like that with you guys. But I think... Back in the day, it, it was a desire, but dude, going into a different culture where a lot of people speak a different language, some speak English, True. It, that and it was intimidating. First and foremost, it was intimidating so much so that I wouldn't do it. But now we've been through a lot. Where'd you, you go? translator? Uh, For what? I didn't go anywhere. I just like I, I remember one time. And this <laughs> Mike's is like no. I'm saying <laughs> it, I, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't go anywhere because it was such an intimidating thing. Like I mean, even my grandpa, he's been in Norway a billion times, and he's like, "You should go," and I'm like. I, it's intimidating. Like most of them don't speak English. Some do. Yeah, I know. But like you got to find the ones that speak your own language just to like accomplish something. It's intimidating. Couldn't you guys see Mike backpacking around Europe? I, yeah, dude. Absolutely. I I've wasn't like that, that close to doing it. But at one point it was like kind of in that transition of not knowing what I was going to do and not making it into the guard. I was like, I almost signed up to go be like a, a ski bum you know work a at this ski at in switzerland though oh wow whoa yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. Different, and, then, dude. and then he looked up what's their main language and he <laughs> yeah. saw it was swiss or what yeah swedish german german german, german. oh yeah. mexican I, yeah, mean, but, I don't know dude you i think you would have figured it out that would have been right. cool i could totally and that's the beautiful it. thing about all of this like you, there's no reason, there's no true reason to be intimidated because you would figure it out. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we got to go some more places this winter. I would like, love that. We got to just Oktoberfest in Germany. I think Whoa. we already missed that. But next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> October. <laughs> Damn it. That'd be lit. Yeah. We'll plan it. It seems like those videos are always pretty lit. Everyone's yeah. in a good mood and like excited. And that's the thing of like experiencing something new. You never know what you're going to get into. Nope. It's very true. Yeah. Especially with our group. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ev, where do you want to go? Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Oh, we know why Ev wants to go to Amsterdam. <laughs> what? The hookers. Yeah, that'd be a bonus. 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he was doing it for the legal. It's it's legal marijuana. Uh, I think you don't like, have to go all the way. To- <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, that's what I was going like to say. That's, that's what I was going to say. I was like, I mean, shit, dude. <laughs> what Amsterdam is the place that has the red, red light, light district, district yeah. right? Yeah, where like the girls are just like in the window. Supposedly. That's crazy, dude. Europe's a different place. Mm-hmm. I think mushrooms are legal in in Amsterdam too. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I'm assuming a lot of things are then. <laughs> Uh, back to the U S I want to trigger somebody right now. What, what do you guys think is the worst state? Or is this the worst place to live? California. Triggered. Mm. You're yeah. saying California. Okay. I was going to go Seattle, with like, Seattle, Washington. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Seattle, Washington. I just remembered. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I take that back. I was just going to wow. attack someone and just go like Arkansas. Arkansas I, just I no, Arkansas is sick. You've been to Arkansas? Uh, you ever seen Ozarks? That's Missouri. No. Shoot, I'm pretty sure it's Missouri. Yeah, I think you might be right. <laughs> yeah, might be right. I, think I feel it like might Arkansas be would probably be like people okay. like us. I, yeah, I was just gonna say. And I would not. I would not suggest. Uh, I'm gonna go a little farther west, like Dickinson, North Dakota, being like, you gotta go to Dickinson. You gotta see it. Also, trigger all the people in Dickinson. But like, I don't think anyone in Dickinson is like, you gotta come to Dickinson. <laughs> yeah, true. That'd be a good prank. Tell someone how good Dickinson is. And send them there. Yeah, there's tons of stuff to do. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the other thing, too, about traveling and going places. Even if it sucks, we come home and we just have something to talk about how much it sucks. And, like, that's go, true. going yeah. to Seattle. I'm happy that we went to Seattle. The fact that I didn't die or get mugged. That place was terrible. Every single corner that we turned. But now that we're home, to laugh about it, <laughs> it's funny because I've talked to so many people about how sit- shitty Seattle is. And most of the time they agree, but if they don't, I'm very passionate to change their mind. Uh-huh. One of my buddies, Ben, uh, Ben from another Ben that uh, from high school, I actually saw him last weekend. And the last time I had spoke to him was almost like eight months prior to now, uh, eight months ago. And uh, he told me he was thinking about moving. I go, where? He goes, yeah, I was thinking about Seattle. I just like bit my tongue. It was just like, hmm. but also I was, you know, Seattle, a also, nice part of it. And it was fucking sweet. Like, not downtown Seattle, bad news bears, but we were legitimately, we landed in Seattle okay. and went 45 minutes that way. Yeah, but we like, also came in on a private I think jet and we I took think a helicopter. We went to a sweet lake. I think we yeah. were at a different spot than Seattle, though. You're not, no, in, you're right. Yeah, I'm just thinking Seattle. of like the actual Seattle downtown. That's like saying Fargo yeah, yeah. versus like Cormorant. Uh, yeah, exactly. Anyway, so, so he I mean, said that to me and I just bit my tongue. I was like, oh, you know, and I was, I was kind of like, man, maybe he's like changed. And then I saw him last weekend. It just doesn't seem like the type of place you're like. I see him last weekend, and I saw that he went on a trip just recently to Seattle. I go, hey, how was your trip uh, to Seattle? He goes, man, that place is a shit hole. <laughs> I was like, so you're not moving there? And he goes, no way. That place has got to be the worst city in the world. He he was on the same page. And Without I go, dude, you saying anything. Yeah, I go, dude, I literally bit my tongue when you told me that Whatever the last time we talked. And it was really funny because then we both bonded over. I was telling him stories and he was telling basically the same exact story. <laughs> homeless, drug doers. You're like outnumbered by the homeless over there. But uh, anyway. So he, about rec- he recently went there though. Yeah, literally like two weeks ago. Because we went kind of like post-COVID right yeah. when it was, you Still know. Still shitty. Right. Apparently. Uh, yeah. I was wondering if it got any better, but no. <clears throat> well, we need speak- to get that place under control. Anyway. <laughs> uh, we, speak- should, we should do a, a tour before we move on from... Uh, this topic we should do a tour east this year i would love to i would love to take i don't know where we would go for it being epping dude (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i feel like there's some pretty cool places we could go east we could hit the carolinas you could go i'd like to see new york probably not gonna drive the 40 foot rv with a 40 foot trailer through new york but it'd be cool to see new york like it'd be cool to see like some different type of stuff and probably end up doing some different things and then we can just end her back down in florida and then stay in florida forever that's not a bad idea. Not forever. Okay. Not forever. I think the worst part is I've I have like some weird uh, bucket list to go to Maine. But yeah, Maine wh- would be sweet. Why? Why? Why, why it gotta be why, way over why there? Why Maine? Because Maine is like sort of Midwest vibes, sort of UP vibes, and they have the ocean. They get snow. They have terrain. It's just a, it's an interesting state to me. I think it's cool. I way up there. It's cool. like the northern version of Florida. I mean, a horrible comparison. But, you know, yeah, it's I just like a that was a pretty bad comparison. Just because they're so different. But yeah. I want to go to Maine. Mm. But, like, it's so out of the way. There's no reason to drive to Maine, in Unless my opinion. Unless you're going to Maine. Yeah. 
Uh, but along the lines of our great state of Minnesota, dude, Young Gravy has been killing it lately. And he, if you guys didn't know this, I didn't know him for a while, but then when I found it out, I was obviously stoked because it's always fun to hear Somebody creators and that. musicians and whatnot from your state. And Young Gravy is like from Rochester, Minnesota. Yeah. Just been killing it lately. I mean, among yeah, many artists, but like, I mean, he's banging just Addison song Ray's mom. After, yeah, song Still? after song after song. I don't, I, that's I, what I saw. I was a They probably, were dating, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, think, I think that's I think a that thing about the social, TikTok world. I think that was just like a social play. Dude, no, dude, dude I they hate are that. dating. They were kissing and stuff. I mean, yeah. still, I, I think it's a publicity I stunt. That. I hate the TikTok people and the, the, the media always goes when two people are together. Like Young Gravy and Addison Ray's mom, they go, they're dating. They were dating. Dude. Nah, man, they're fucking. No, they're they're fucking. No, they're hanging out. <laughs> Maybe for two not weeks. even. Wait, yeah, I think like, they were dating, up. dude. CJ, what is your like, proof other did than he you saw them walk kiss up to once? her and go? I'm pretty sure they were Ray's dating, mom, bro. Why? Why is going on a date dating? Or what do you qualify as dating? Does he go, hey, Addison Ray's mom, will you be my girlfriend? Like no, that? They to were me like is dating. doing like. Like interviews and stuff together. That's what I mean. It's publicity all publicity. Stunt. They're just maybe they were hooking up. Maybe they're giving a little smooch at the VMAs or wherever the frick they were. But I just don't like the term dating. It makes it way too dramatic. The thing about Young Gravy is he has that's a tacky there. He has oh, <laughs> he has made himself the milf hunter of the internet, mm-hmm. and now he just has that title. So he's, locked in. he's locked yeah, in. He's locked yeah, he's locked decides. in. He's locked in. But like every interview I've ever seen with him, or like any video on on Instagram or TikTok that's gone viral, is him making some kind of mom comment. Mm-hmm. So now I it's wonder. Thing. I wonder if he if that's always been his thing, or if now he's just locked into it. I think it has been for a long time. Yeah, like at least the past couple of years, he's been into moms, but it's definitely peaked now. Maybe it's a Midwest a thing. I don't know. But, dude, <laughs> whenever, when anyone else is around him, like as far as guys or competition, don't stand a chance. He's like 6'5", got a super low voice, and then just like a, all the blonde hair, and he's like, I'm a rapper. Like, how could any mom say no? That's your type, huh, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention that I wanted to fuck Young Gravy? That's kind of how it came. That's kind of how it was coming off there. I don't know of a whole lot of moms, but it depends yeah. what group of moms you're hanging all right, out hey, with. Okay. All right. All right. Picture this. The complete opposite. Shorter. Uh, dark hair. No beard. No beard, but a little bit of facial hair. An absolute hog. And his name is Evan. I was going to say, you kind of sound like you're describing Evan. And what, what is he? rap? Does he rap? <laughs> well, he can't rap, but uh, he, he can, can ride he, wheelies. He can ride basically anything that he puts his leg over. <laughs> <laughs> Evan loves moms, too. All right, so winter's coming up. And I don't know why. I was just thinking about taking a snowmobile trip this winter. And then I started reflecting on all the other snowmobile trips that we've taken over the years. And kind of how it's just like evolved into, I don't want to say the only reason we take snowmobile trips is to film videos, but basically over the last couple of winters, it has been. So I was thinking, man, what is it like to even go on a trip without filming it? And I was thinking about the time in West Yellowstone and you rented that sled (sighs) from, uh, I I thought we talked about this. No, we haven't. No. Never told this really? story on the podcast. I don't think we, we ever got have. stoned. No. Yeah, I don't think we ever have. I totally forgot about it until now. The last time I heard this story was when it was happening, and we <laughs> were in the college house. This was a wild thing, and the fact that we never like picked up the camera to explain what Wait was happening. <laughs> it was a different time. It was, it was a, a different, different time. time. And we now, were, I think, I, well, I didn't film any of it because I was terrified. So now we have the podcast to reflect too. on it. But anyway, okay, just... just uh, I don't know. Start, start, start from the story. The, start story. from the top of uh, renting the sled. So we go to West Yellowstone all the time to ride sleds. That's where we always go. Um, we didn't have sleds. So you want a cheap rental, right? You want the cheapest possible. If you go out there for a three-day trip and rent an 800, you're, you're a thousand in just on rental. So we like hooked up with uh, Highmark Rentals. I, I can only... drop their name then. I dropped the name only mm-hmm. because there's new owners now and, and there's... There's nothing wrong with the company. It's a great rental company. So like, um, well, did yeah. you get screwed over to them? Uh, but to be honest, <laughs> it's so up for debate. Keep no, up for just debate. tell the story. Tell the to story. Be honest, I jumped into soon. Mostly them 
And then I just got tangled up in it. But uh, rented a sled from them. They said, you know, bring it back at six. And it was pretty loose because they gave it. I, I got insurance, but I think they gave it to us for free. You know, rent like did just make we? sure you. I don't know. I, or maybe it was like did. something cheap, but it was like definitely a deal. Did and, we? Okay. And oh, so you kind of like we're we're, we're filming a video here, and, and they yeah, got like, it. We're we gonna walk, give you a little promo. We, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did. In the beginning yeah, of the video, them. we walked up and we're at High Mark. Look at all these sleds. This is yeah, great. It yeah. was all good. So they were kind of already good. giving. And then we rode one day, and they were like, "Wow, how many days do you ride?" And I'm like, three, but we're gonna go to this expo because that was when Ben raced his snow bike in West Yellowstone, which oh is also pretty cool. Dropped it off too late like we were all kind of like it was getting dark but we were like well it's our last day you need to get your rental back micah and i was like i think they'll understand yeah you have to have it back to them by like four, you know before four they all five, before, before they, they all close. kick it and basically brought it back pulled it into their fence area with all the other sleds um took the key out but put it in the dash you know so it wasn't at least in there but that's all i did and then i i texted the the owner or whoever was helping me and i said drop the sled off Sorry for having it late. I, I definitely felt bad even at that point. Like, it didn't, nothing fell off, but I felt bad for bringing it back late. But other than that, things seemed fine. You'd think they'd have cameras. At least one camera out front watching their $100,000 worth of sleds just in the front yard. And then fast forward to... Yeah, a yeah. little backstory on this is whenever we would go on a snowmobiling trip, basically whenever we got to the edge of Fargo, which is the city nearest to us, Micah would not have service for the next days until yeah. he got back because he had sprint some wi-fi sucked. at the hotel and that's it but you Maybe. couldn't even really get calls on wi-fi i don't nope. think before so he basically was cell phoneless the they were trying trip. to get a hold of you get home get some calls he goes where's my sled i'm sure they thought you ran off with totally. it because you just totally. didn't say anything they, they probably yeah early. and then you weren't or, or answering said, where sure are you were calling and, and, and they're, they're like this dude to just took mail. it yeah and i said i'm back home in fargo he goes that's a problem where's my sled you take it with you and I was like, so what? confused, you know, didn't even know what to say. And I was just like, dude, no. Did we what? accidentally um, load up the rental Yeah, I'm sled? like, wait, you, um, sorry, this is, I got to, where is your sled? That's what I'm wondering. Where is the sled? And I'll, you didn't drop it off? Yeah, I dropped it off. I swear I dropped it off. You know, getting a little panicky. And I was like, I swear I pulled it in. I really apologize for bringing it late. I apologize for not like hiding the keys better or, or tracking someone down in person or something. And they were just pressing me and pressing me. And they, um, I'm like, okay, well, we got insurance on it. Did it get stolen? Well, I don't know. We're talking to the police. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, good. Yeah. And did anyone else ever, did anyone else ever hit you up? Like police or? No, no police, no nothing. So then I said at this point, I'm like, I don't know what else to tell you, but I don't have your snowmobile. And I didn't do anything with your snowmobile besides bring it back to your property. And then he's like, all right, well, you know, we're talking to the police. I'm like, good. Figure it out. Good. We'll get this They're figured out. They're being real dicks to you. It, it yeah, had, and they were. Because I was, it was a true misunderstanding. And basically, someone that night, since it was like an expo weekend, there's a big event going on, someone must have drunkenly that night wa wandered in there Take somehow, you know, started How many it. I know you are there in, like there in the there's front. Yeah, I'd say there was there's about 20 and then so the back. There's probably another you 30 and only yours got taken. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the keys were out of the other ones. Yeah. And likely. the keys must have been nowhere to be seen. But then the fact that he goes up to that one and like somehow finds the keys because it had to been again, checking every one. Are you sure you didn't leave that shit in the ignition, Mike? I couldn't tell you uh, <laughs> for sure, for sure. But uh, so basically someone stole it. Left I don't it know running. if that <laughs> happened. I don't know if it happened. No, because we have a we have video footage of me dropping it off too. So I sent we them that too. There was a yeah. bar right next to it too. Like yeah. they were neighbors with the local like hooligans bar. Yeah. So basically someone stole it, but they found it piled up it, at the bottom of one of the popular riding mount you know like a hill like a probably creek. ghost road that thing something like but that it was like out in the woods yeah so Supposedly. somebody stole it and then just drove Crashed it out in it. the woods or they it, took it for a little hit it and then in the day went and piled it true and the the way i found that out was like i called again and was like hey because yeah, they never reached back out they to weren't you. And, and mike I, is like calling and being like yo we, we, did we find the sled yet like yep. do I'll, i gotta pay you i'll eight still grand? pay well like, and i was like i'll still pay the deductible like yeah. i feel horrible about this and then the dude before i even prefaced all that the dude just goes the what whoever answered the phone goes oh 
See, but you're the kid who uh, stole the sled, st- crashed the sled at the bottom of two tops. And I go, right. uh, nope, nope, that not me. I mean, I'm the dude. Yeah, I, you, I'm who you think I am, but I'm not. I didn't do what you thought I did. <laughs> and so then I kind of found I was like, someone t- stole it and crashed it at the bottom of two tops. What on planet Earth? And how did I get tangled up in this? And why aren't the police involved? And why am I getting like kind of pegged for this? Hey, Mike, you should call them back this year and say, hey, Micah, think I could see boys. Think I could borrow <laughs> another sled? Well, It'll be in the video. So, like, could, maybe we could exchange that for no like payment. I, like, I just said, like for real this time. Fuck off. That's what it's it's, no, there's different owners now, but it's oh, like it's it? always been a really popular rental company in West Yellowstone and nothing bad about them because they always have the cool sleds. Yep. That's why we went there in the first place. But it was a giant miscommunication. Like, what are the odds that, yeah, like that I that I rent a sled? Uh, off of a maybe a good word from from us and someone else and then well I'll, I'll, oh yeah and then sam Busker. yeah and then and then one of my well actually a bunch of my buddies went out <laughs> the next week like the week and after that they were asking where should we rent and i was like oh hi mark rental no no they didn't ask me that they didn't ask me that they just watched the video and oh, then yeah. they saw us promoting that and then they go to high mark rentals rent a bunch of sleds and then they go hey yeah sea boy sent us and the guy was like, all right, fuck those guys. They owe me money. He crashed my sled. All this shit. And then Just, they come back. And then I was talking, hey, how was the trip? And they were like, yo, you guys really did that dirty. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, what? no, they think that. But it's just funny. I, I bet a bunch of people went and rented because we promoted a couple times. That wasn't the first yeah. time that we'd worked with them. And then they were just like, no, fuck those kids. They were like, what? <laughs> Man, that was a mess. That was just one of those, one of those mistakes you make being like nineteen. Yeah, you know, going out there by yourself and making deals. And I mean, also, honestly, there really wasn't much of a mistake. Really, where you went wrong. That sounds like something that could happen. Today. It's just la- exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a small lack of thinking in the now. Yeah, you know, there's always a lot going on in our lives, and it it kind of. The takes the edge off of thinking in the now. The one part that got a little bit cloudy in the story is that you had rented it for a few days and then we were going to stay for this expo, the snowmobile meet thing. And then we decided, screw that, we're tired, we're going home. So we, to this guy, looks like we didn't bring the sled back and then dip town a day early. <laughs> and then the entire day, while we were driving home, he's calling, trying to figure out where we are, where his sled mm-hmm. is. Micah's phone is going straight to voicemail. <laughs> So he had a whole day of being Oh, totally. Yeah, I, I, I can see the, the issue in it. Classic cripe situation. Man, the rental market is a, is a slippery, greasy slope. <laughs> like, can you imagine renting out a Lamborghini or, like, these exotic car rental places? I follow one in Vegas it's called Royalty Exotics, and they got to be the biggest because they have an insane amount of cars. Mm-hmm. But it seems like... A car is getting totaled once a week. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> like total, total. And like STO. In one like crash. Her, total, total? Cars. Like Huracan STO. So like $400,000, $500,000 cars. Like, I'm sure idiots yeah. are renting them that have never. I mean, it could happen to anyone. But True. it's a high horsepower car. And you're also in Vegas traffic. It really doesn't sound that much fun. Well, no, you can go and hit like, the canyons hit, to yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, Hoover Dam and a bunch of different places around. And they have to kill it. Like. The yeah, fleet that they have, money. yeah, they do. Oh yeah, and it's uh, not cheap. Well, actually, I I heard the owner talking about so, just uh, Huracan Evo. He said they'll rent out about forty five times a month. Wow, damn! So they're yeah, getting like more, more than, than once, one, a day, once a day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. probably rent it crazy. twice and you pay for the car payment on it. Yeah. So that's what I've actually one thing I have heard about exotic rentals in particular is that the insurance. I mean, this is not that surprising, but the insurance no, costs more. Than the payment of the car and more than like you know oil changes and stuff. Mm. The the guy said that he's so afraid to make a to claim make a claim because they'll just that, drop that you. he'll just self and he just mostly just self insures all is, these crashes because yeah he said if he were to make a claim on yeah, a, on they a five, basically on just five hundred thousand dollar sto yeah, crash drop he was like it would be an absolute nightmare so he has if to they, pay to fix it me. 500 racks out of his pocket well yeah. i mean yeah. i guess guy, that would be a replace he, dude, it cost he, he was like it, it is like so disgusting how much i already pay in insurance 
and I don't even get to use it. Scared, terrified to make a claim. That is so messed up. Yeah. So uh, also think of like being the guy that rented the car. And you're like, all right, honey, going to Vegas this week. And she's like, all right, be careful. She's worried about like him going to the strip club or like betting the farm at the uh, at the and casino. He, <laughs> and he calls and goes, hey, honey. And she's like, hey, how's Vegas? And he's like, oh, not so good. I crashed a car. Oh, no, that's not good. Yeah, it's a $500,000 car. Like what? How do you, how do you? I'm sure they're off the hook. They're probably off the hook yeah, for the most part. Really? Oh, you think? Yeah, dude. I'm I'm sure you sign a thing or you pay the. Well, actually, I mean, not that they're on the hook for the whole 500k, but man, that's got to be an expensive guys, deductible. You like would the deductible think maybe still their gotta insurance be. would have to. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. know. Yeah, I don't so, know how that works. Um, legitimate question: How does Turo work? Turo. It's like that's a bad it, deal. You don't want to do that. So that's what I've always Mike's thought. This I, I, out yeah. on <laughs> Mike, you got so many cars, you, you could. Should. You wouldn't even right. know if one of and them were gone. And I'm not <laughs> asking that question because I legitimately want to. I've always looked at that and never looked into it and been like, that seems so. You sketchy. can just rent someone's car. So like you basically, I think, rent it and then uh, leave it at a spot, and you can rent. I've seen this one video, anyways, and some dude had rented his the other guy's car on Turo and he took it and the guy was tracking it and he found it at a shop. He brought it back to a shop and was taking like all of the good parts off and then putting like, so he would take like an OEM bumper off and then put like a cheap eBay ABS, like crappy plastic one on and then repaint it and redo it. Right. And like, so he do mediocre work yeah. and then sell the OEM stuff. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And they caught him. Like on video. That is a wild chop shop. Yeah. It's a whole nother version of chop shop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I bet like that rent. guy was doing that with, with rental cars too. Oh, from yeah. like Bro, the airport. And you do a Turo car, your car's going to get so messed yeah, it up. Just doesn't yeah, seem you can't have any personal can't, connection gonna to it. They're going to spill a drink, so then, a pop in it, whatever. No. You know? Ken so then and I, I was did a like, They'll probably eat really? hot wings in it. So, and right. obviously you guys are respectful, so. <laughs> Dude, mean. well, yeah. Okay, so Ken and I consi- are considered to be respectful people, maybe. Uh, and we rented a Tesla in Salt Lake City, and we hooned that thing. I mean, obviously oh. they're fairly tough cars, but we hooned that thing the entire four days that we had it. Wait, you turroed it? Yeah, we turroed it. Because I know mostly most of the time when they do a, a Tesla rental, they can, like, detune it and... Oh, no, this baby was full power, weird. dude. We went up like the canyons. It was still early, like spring, so some of the roads were closed, but like nobody was on them. So you like ripping up to these ski resorts, and it was just like open roads, hauling. So fun. <laughs> Another thing that the Vegas guy was saying is that they curb rash so many oh, wheels. Oh. I bet that's just a given. He started his own wheel company <laughs> and has just like a an entire yeah, warehouse just... full of Huracan wheels. And wow. I just get some fixed. He has a guy who fix them and then probably it's yeah, not a bad terrible. Yeah. 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 But like yeah, yeah, I mean it's not easy driving those cars. Especially if you've never driven a lower vehicle before. It'd be so freaking easy to tear the lip off. And you're in a different city and you probably were up till four AM drinking the night before, like and you know, it's a rental. All bad things. Definitely wouldn't rent mine out, that's for sure. No, I don't think so either. That's <laughs> why I was confused. I've heard like a couple videos where people like just organically mention it. Like, yeah, I was renting my car out on Turo. I'm like, oh, shit. Whoa. You, that car? Really? I don't know. I just doesn't I seem. I guess maybe you do it once and you make the payment on it. And it's like, all right, that, I, I got to lose dude, it for a day. There is something valid about that. Yeah, you, you rent it like once or twice or once for three days. And all of a sudden, your monthly payments. What you got for us, Benny? <laughs> Ryan, I hate to out you. Oh, <laughs> frick. And if you don't want to tell the story, it's fine. But. Have you ever told the story about the time that you told your mom that you were uh, Ubering people with her car? Oh, man. My mom hasn't commented on the last <laughs> oh, podcast when uh, when I uh, Did the got in a, in a crash when I and I told him something else. But uh, well, that was yeah. your um, no. So <laughs> my freshman I year. I don't, so I don't know this either for the record. So my freshman year of college, I loved going to concerts and. They were always down in the cities. We'd take like these little weekend trips down the cities. Well, we were all in college. None of us really had good cars. And I think we wanted to take like six people down there. And so I'm like, all right, well, nobody's going to fit in any of our cars, whatever. I'm like, I got it. I'll borrow my mom's car. Well, I started like I borrowed it for one trip and I bought it for another. And then I don't know why, but I was like 
or no, she, I don't know why, but then she just drew the line at that one. She's like, no, you can't take my car to the cities again. Like I need it or whatever. And I was like, Hey mom. So then I made up a story. I was like, Hey mom, I need some extra money, but I can't, uh, use my car so can i use your car this weekend and i'm gonna be an uber driver for the weekend <laughs> it's it's brilliant it's a it's a good she's not gonna like a good tale no and so we all loaded up in her caddy and then headed to the cities for a concert but she said oh, okay she yeah she said okay she, she was like okay yeah you can for you ubering it she's like yeah you can be an uber driver and also, what and, and yeah even the the times before too god bless her for letting us use that because mm -hmm. we rode to the concerts in luxury in the cat. Yeah, it was sweet. <laughs> Wasn't she like, how'd you put 450 miles on my car in two days? Probably. I, no, but I also... Know. it's probably like, I probably yeah, was like, oh, I don't know, I'm driving yeah. around town yeah. all night. Yeah. A lot of back and forth. It was kind of true. I was Ubering my friends to the cities. Yeah. and In a way, yeah. I guess you should be an Uber band in your Lamborghini. I think that's like a... It's a bummer all the easy Lamborghini videos are played out now. Like, you can't just like, go take a yeah, driver's license test in it or yeah. go bring it to your school yeah. or be pick up people in Ubers. Like, that was like 10 million views five years ago. Yeah. And then now... Oh, so like, there's one... Maybe one thing. This is still pretty generic, but a buddy of mine hit me up and he, like, were, they um, equip cars, like, police cars, among other, like, special forces cars with the uh, sirens and lights and the... And then like the loudspeakers, <laughs> yeah, you know, murp, murp. so he hit me up and said, there's a controller, it, depending on what brand of uh, loud, like siren speaker is in your Lambo. Does yeah. it have a siren speaker? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's like, you can put a little head unit thing on there and load like any sound you want. So oh, like that'd really? be fun. Oh, yeah. Like so, so we have to figure that out. I haven't, he just hit me up about it, but yeah, yeah. Anything, anything you want, like, you know, so that's where it's kind of funny that options are endless. Like, so what would be funny? If you saw a Lamborghini. Fart noises. Yeah, just fart noises or Classic. like that one. Oh, <laughs> or something. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, it can play basically any sound we wanted to. But again, it's pretty <laughs> generic. Just a Lambo making weird sounds. But have you ever said why it has the siren in the lights? I don't think so. So the guy that I bought it from. Just in case you need to make any citizens arrest, you know? Well, okay. Well, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So the guy that I bought it from had it as like a rally car like he would do like not like off-road rallies like car rallies across like the united states and he had it wrapped like an italian police car and had the the lights installed in it and the guy like messaged me after i bought the car he saw it and was like enjoy those lights those were eight thousand dollars or something <laughs> like that jeez i mean it looked all custom yeah, it was super custom, and I'm sure it was a wiring nightmare. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I basically, I got the lights, and I knew if I used them in a video, like, we would hear about it immediately uh, from our, you know, just local sheriffs or <laughs> really any law enforcement. Um, so I didn't, but I obviously, I was so surprised when I got the car, and I pressed the button underneath, yeah. and, it, and it had the sirens. I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> not expecting that at all. And then, come factory. and then, yeah, I had uh, a buddy reach out and was like, hey, I talked to a uh, couple local law enforcement and they're not happy that you're in Lambo. Just one. Or, yeah, they're not happy that the Lambo has lights. And if they see you using it, actually, they said, like, if, if they see you on the road, they're going to impound the vehicle and throw you in jail. And I was like, hold up. He said, quote, I can't wait to see it. If on they, a, if on they, a tow truck. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. And they were, I was like, a, one guy okay, statement. so what do I do? I was like, I'm not going to spend eight grand to have them completely uninstalled. Yeah, and I was like, obviously, I don't care that much about the lights. I didn't <laughs> yeah. have them put not try, in. Not trying to play cops and robbers. Yeah, yeah exactly. and I'm also not trying to use them. And so I was just like, okay, uh, I mean, good to know. And and uh, obviously, I get that because let's just say I am a total idiot and I'm driving around pretending to pull people over. That was a That's thing around here yeah, uh, so a few illegal. years ago. Some yeah. guy did it in like a, a Ford Explorer, you know, a car that yeah. looks like it could be a cop. Yeah. He'd pull people over and then just never get out of the car and people would Weird. just sit there, which is and, super scary. Fun, and I'm dude. sure that they thought yeah. they're going to do this for a video. They're going to like pretend oh, to pull maybe. people over. Totally makes sense. Like I yeah. was, I wasn't too like, well, That's what where I, I was like, yeah, it makes sense. I was upset with their assumption because there's about three ways you could go about having a system like that in your car. One, where we legitimately go try to 
fake pull people over. That's really illegal and something yeah. we wouldn't do. No. Two. It would be funny to do to your friend, though. <laughs> would be really fun. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's Even if it was, like, set up, it would be funny. Like, obviously, the person getting pulled over wouldn't know. But two, you could um, overuse it. You know, you got these sirens. You're you're not using it as a police officer. You're just like, look what I can do. Yeah. Doing, making all the noises and the lights. And then three, it would have been like, it, let's say you didn't get threatened. You would have used it every once in a while. Maybe at a car show. Well, that's maybe the thing parked. To me. There's a difference. You pull yeah. into a holiday gas station and, and go, someone's boop, like, boop. cool car. And you'd be like, yeah, man, check, check this, this out. out. And then there's a difference between you and driving through town. You go, oh, I'm so sick of these red lights. I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. flip them on and <laughs> drive through. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. There's you know, two, Lamborghini. There's yeah. two yeah. uses yeah. to it. Yeah. And one of them is pretty extreme and understandable why they'd be so mad so that's why i hated the genericness behind their statement of, yeah, if i see yeah. that thing on the road they were just excited i think i, if, I, I, I think if you used understand. it in the wrong way yeah i can understand guy by the way not they. well whoever i so i ended up having them like disconnected and so like i hit the buttons and everything they can't turn on but i think it'd be really cool to get like the local sheriffs involved and then slap some stickers on the side and then for like Thanksgiving, have the lights on, pull people over, like the sheriff drive the car, yeah. oh. pull people over, and like give them money. Oh, that'd be super. Oh, like, or like super turkey, cool. yeah, or, yeah, like pull something. people over and, and so go. How hard is it to wire them back up? Not. Uh, I could. Yeah, it's yeah. not super. Let's hard. do that, dude. We could totally do that. I feel like they'd be down to do that. That'd be really. That'd cool. be an awesome. But the only problem is that. if you're you're pulling people over that are obviously they're not doing anything wrong, and then also like. Maybe they're in a rush. Now they're getting pulled over and they miss something, you know. But they, but they mean, wouldn't be mad. Money or you yeah, give them a hand. You can yeah, do it true. in, uh, uh, this happened to my friends in Fargo. Uh, they got pulled over one day, totally random, in a work truck. And they're like, you know, they're driving a DOT work truck. They're like, oh no, what do we do all this? They're running through the things. And uh, it was just a cop to pull them over for thanking them for wearing their seatbelt. And they gave them a donut. That's it. Huh. There was no fines. Maybe they didn't turn their blinker on early enough. Maybe they have to have probable cause to pull you over. But, yeah, they literally pulled them over and was like, hey, guys, thanks for wearing your seatbelt today. Here's a donut. It's kind of yeah, cool. The only thing I think about with that, like imagine you were late to your work and then you get pulled over just for someone to give you a someone, donut. I'd be like, this is really <laughs> nice, but I am now going to get in big trouble yeah. with my boss. And, so, and you know, well, and that's my only concern. Most of the time, like you we're could, like pulling people over, our, you know, oh, but that's, that's a very we're doing valid it for a good, thought. Maybe you just catch them like walking it, like hopping in their car right out of Walmart. Or something. It's really is you just have like a dick boss because most would go, Oh, you got pulled over. You can't help that. Yeah. And you'd be like, I wasn't even speeding. Yeah. They get whatever. Yeah. But there was a guy in Florida that uh, was literally dressing up and pretending to be an officer and pulling people over. This and it's crazy. all on video. And it's so freaking funny. You got to watch it. it. I it mean, Ross this Grayson? guy was a no, psycho. No, 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 no. He was just, he would dress up as a cop and he had like these cop lights on his, like It car. was for a funeral procession, but, but he, he would, oh, and all yeah. his cronies yeah. would yeah. act like they were police. And they'd be like, so, yeah, like, like, what is pull that? Over, pull. Like, it, I was in tears the watching highway. it. It is so funny. Can we funny. pull it up, please? Oh it my gosh. It is so I funny. Will. We got to pull it up and put it on. Like, I'm not kidding you. I think I've watched it like four different times and I was in tears every time. This guy was a, such a psychopath. So he, so, he was flat out like a psychopath troll. He was yeah. trolling. No, so, no, 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 no. He, he was, was just serious. being serious, and yeah, he, was he was like was playing serious. cop. So basically, his job was to oh. run the lights and uh, s be the escort for like a funeral where they have to drive from wherever they were doing it to basically yeah. the grave. And there's always those lines, and they have people that hold off roads and stop stuff. And he would be on a motorcycle. And he would have a GoPro because he freaking, for some reason, thought it was awesome. Gotta film it, yeah. So he'd be whipping around and, like, fucking swearing at people and, like, pull over, pull over. Like, it's so fucking funny. I'll pull it up, but look at this dude. Look at the dude. Like, I mean, that's can, him. That's, that's him. him. Just oh, my God. Acting dude. a fool. So I'll He's pull up the man. best video, but I mean, they call him, like, a serial police impersonator it's so funny Seriously, you guys serial oh movie. my gosh dude i'm i'm just happy we get to watch this again oh man this is such a funny video i remember finding this and showing it to cj and him crying I was in tears, the dude. first time this had been a couple years ago you yeah. showed me this look at this somewhere. let's go let's go let's go look at how he's oh, yeah, doing it for a corvette rally in this one full-blown police officer he's crying now can you imagine thinking that this isn't going to backfire? He's blocking the road. 
And he'd be doing this for like, not even just funerals, but like Corvette rallies and stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> what? Come here, dude. Sit right here. He's so angry. Right here. Stop. No, right here. Stop. Wait, is that a real cop? No. Go past me. Go past me. This is another one of the His funeral buddies. procession cars. Like, but they make it look like they're cops. Metro State Vehicle Protection. Repo, take this intersection and keep this shit under control. <laughs> We got those Starbucks cups. Yeah. We got to get to like the best parts here. Who the fuck knows? I don't, all I know is we have the right of way. The right of way. There's a real cop flying. there. He's just flying. He's just flying past these people. It's going like a hundred, dude. Look at this. He's risking his life. <laughs> and my my favorite part is keep in mind these people that he's passing right now are in a funeral procession. The funeral he's escort just statue past doesn't him. cover this. Those are the At people 100. that hired him <laughs> for a safe and effective drive through town. He's doing that to them. Yo, this guy is the classic situation of didn't get through cop school and now he's figuring out a second second option. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the funeral procession. Yeah, he's probably mad. mad at them. He is. Look at him, dude. Dude, oncoming Holy on a bridge? Shit. With that much traffic and a semi coming? Oh, Jesus, oh, dude. Oh. <laughs> I love this, dude. Look at all these caddies, freaking. What the? Probably the family what? in these cars. He's splitting lanes between them. <laughs> you gotta hear what he's like. I know. When we get to the part, he starts yelling. This, this, that's the Bro, hearse. He's pushing the that's hearse off the road. I love how he lets himself get behind and then angrily passes he's everybody. Stopping the cars. He's stopping everyone Look, on just, a red light. Sitting there. Hey! <laughs> Car stops. He expects everyone to know what's going on. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Points at it. <laughs> Do you not see my bike? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like he's constantly hands up. Hands. What are you doing? Hey! Stop your vehicle! <laughs> <laughs> he reverses. <laughs> it's the siren on full blast. He's shaking his head all pissed off, dude. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Tears off. Oh, this Some guy. Some white bitch in a blue car. Some white bitch in a blue car. He goes after, I think. <laughs> and they have no idea what's going on at all. They have no idea why or what. Imagine Mike driving this guy comes after him. <laughs> I'd be such a... Well, I'd probably think he's a real cop, to be honest, just Get like over. everyone else. Get over. <laughs> they put, put... What's him in the media? Bitch. <laughs> Dude, you better figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta figure, figure it, it out. out. <laughs> <laughs> Literally not even. <laughs> He's pointing fingers everybody. at everybody. Dude. I would love to run into this guy in public. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, would the take... <laughs> <laughs> it would take 30 seconds to get him riled up. You better. You, the out of my funeral. Out of my funeral. What the heck, dude? You over there. <laughs> Put him in timeout. <laughs> Literally. I think this blue car is in it, and he's, like, pissed off. This guy's just continuing to drive. Get the fuck over! <laughs> <laughs> dude. Like, imagine... Being in that car driving to the funeral, and you got this jackass driving the bike up. Like it's okay. The ne the guy in the Nissan Sentra isn't bothering us. What are you doing? What the fuck does it look like I'm doing, dumb fuck? Get the fuck over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. 
Listen, Stop motherfucker, it. I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it the fuck out before you start talking shit. <laughs> and cutting all this off. I'm not do, cutting anyone. Go ahead and pull your little phone out. I'm not do your little Google off. search and figure out what we're doing and what I we legally what allow. Oh Good. Then gosh. back off and give us room. I'm not, Europe, I'm not interfering with you at all. You are by you are running blocking, along. You've been blocking traffic. Yeah, I need you to stay to the side, sir. Dude. That's what the legal I'm law is. The Go back and look it up. 316. Call Good. Call, call it. now. Please. 911 right now. I'm not calling 911. Go ahead. Call the 911 right now. I'm not going to call 911. Tell them it's, it's on video emergency. too. Let them know all of us it's on video. We also you have your tag number. So please let me know. <laughs> oh, this, is when, this is when he pulls on the interstate. And then shuts down the entire interstate. Yeah, for a Corvette, <laughs> for a Corvette, rally. For a Corvette rally. rally. This guy is definitely a psychopath. I know Watch what you're this. saying now. Watch this. They shut down the interstate. Hot lanes, hot lanes, hot lanes, hot lanes. <laughs> ASAP, where the fuck are you going? Dude, this is some quality entertainment. Yeah, this is good. Just this wait. guy could have his own show on TV. This is the best. Let's get some body footage of the cars racing by. Especially ASAP, get off your bike with the body camera footage of the cruiser. We just shut down fucking 90 fucking motherfucking five. And he's like getting he's off. Not a he's mother. Good. He's getting off. To it. Not a motherfucker. Not a motherfucker can do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely getting off to it. It's gonna tell him we outrank him. We outrank, we outrank him. him. Yeah, well, I can promise you, there's cops coming right now somewhere. <laughs> he knows real cops coming. What is this? What event is this? This is a funeral for somebody that owned Corvette, right? God damn, you god damn fucking right it is. <laughs> god damn right. Somebody that designed Corvettes died. I can't control the statue. Bro, the statue this guy, says that dude. You, you want to get to the front? Get to the front and find out who it is. <laughs> we need like, can we hire this guy? Yeah, can we hire him to just is like, he like out of jail and shit? Drive us around. Or just do something. Can we you, should just hire him to escort us and dude, then rile him up. He gets off when he's like, "We just shut down nine fucking five. Not a fucking thing we can do about it." <laughs> dude, yeah. Some tells me, uh, you, well, you guys are right. I if he ever stopped me, we wouldn't get along well. This, that guy? No, because I'd be like sarcastic, and he'd start to get all riled oh, up. Oh man, I can't you know? imagine. It, oh, that's only you if would. if I yeah if I knew that something was fishy, I'd start to get all sarcastic with him, and I'd be like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you yeah, would. I'm a, I, I need to stop you. You're not even real comp. <laughs> and then I'd say two. I would never wish this upon anybody, but um, he, dude needs to get a little fendi bendy. I think. Yeah, well, he's, he's already scared. yeah he he got went to jail, but like dude, the way he was driving at the beginning of that. He needs to get like reality checked, which he did again with the penalties. But dude, so, Ross Creations was impersonating a police officer and handing out tickets, parking tickets, oh. and I think he went to jail for like six months. It That's was right. That. That's right. Yeah. A long time. Yeah. Yeah. They don't mess around with that. No. No. And I mean, rightfully so, because yeah. like some no. weirdos, you it's, know, would yeah, totally, exactly. Yeah. You ever thought no. about that when you're getting pulled over? Especially Imagine with an undercover it's cop. In dark, like you're in the dark of the night you don't see the car it just comes up lights behind you it could be Anyone. someone that just showed up and they had cop lights installed in their vehicle because you can't see it's just lights behind you comes yeah. up kills you takes your car or just takes your car or whatever you know like especially if you're like a like a girl or something like i think they worry that with undercover cops uh, yeah like and, if an undercover i think there's some some kind i don't I know think if you this could is probably rule, call 911 yeah. and be like i I think I'm being pulled over, but I'm just calling right now to say I'm going to keep going until an actual cop car gets behind me because, yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah, It would be so weird happen. to even be in that situation. I've definitely heard that before. If you're getting pulled over by an unmarked, give them a ring if you're un if you're scared, unsure about it. But, like, it'd be weird to even be in that situation That's where you're calling though, them. Because most people panic. Yeah. 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 Okay. Get over. Yeah. You know. Don't do anything wrong. Dude, mm. one time I was driving the SEMA truck. And I, every single time I drove that thing, I would get pulled over, I swear. And I was in, like, the middle of town, and there was, like, 
two roads or, or like it was like a two lane road. Um, but the, the curb was right up to the road. There was no shoulder. So it was like curb and then like grass and a, a cop pulled me over because the truck is a walking violation or a driving violation. <laughs> and, um, I was basically just waiting for, um, like, I don't know, 50 yards to pass. And then I was going to pull off, off the road. Because I didn't want to just stop right in the middle of this two lane road on the side of a yeah, you were giving inter- them a more highway. like a safer spot to yeah, be which, on the, which I thought on the road. I thought was pretty normal. I didn't drive for like four minutes, right? It was like maybe fifteen seconds, and um, I had my blinker on and everything. And then the guy came up. I I don't think he was like had his gun out, but he was like hot. came up hot, and he was like, "Get out of the car!" Whoa! And I was like, Whoa. Was this in the day or at night? This is at night. Oh, okay. And and I like get out and he's like, why didn't you pull over? And I was like, oh, there was no shoulder and I didn't want to just stop in the middle of traffic. And he was like, when I pull you over, you pull, pull over right now. Or when you when you turn on my or when I turn on my lights. When I turn on my lights, you pull over right now. Which I guess also kind of makes sense from the standpoint of them assuming uh, assuming that if if you don't pull over you're probably switching seats or something like that something could be going on or, or you're also, hiding drugs if you're or... like pulling into a parking lot he's like i want to be on the side of the highway not in some dark parking lot where you know yeah yeah it's but an anyway, age-old then, problem then he really saw is. that i was like alone and he saw like i don't know i was probably i was just like dude okay. I, I was just getting like off the road and ben was crying <laughs> <laughs> i was like i hate like this truck dude just tow it i don't fucking want no, i don't it. want it anymore uh, it does kind of remind me of this guy being really entitled and whatever, and I, definitely not good. But last night, I wanted Domino's. So I tried to go to Domino's. It was closed. Oof. The, I, I heard you getting all hyped up about it last night, too. That's really sad Sad to hear. Yep. So then my uh, desire for hunger, my hangriness grew. I went, all right, I'm going to go to McDonald's. You were- go to McDonald's. The drive through line is out into the road. And I go... Wow, fuck this. I'm one guy. I'm going to go inside. So I go inside, walk up. There's tons of people. The whole restaurant's full. And uh, I go to the door. It's locked. I'm like, what? Where's the lock? Go try the other door. Locked. I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, well, this is weird. Private party. It closed closed at 10. It's like 8. We're good. So I knock on the window. Everybody in the restaurant or a couple people kind of look over at me, whatever. And I'm like trying to signal to the door, <laughs> and everyone's looking at me. I think you accidentally locked this. Yeah, I'm like, like I look Just like I'm trying crazy. To get some food. <laughs> I look like I'm crazy out there. So then this other group of people walk up by me. I'm like, the door's locked. No, the people aren't letting me in. Whatever. So I keep knocking, and uh, the the guy is not getting through. So guy in the drive through sees me knocking and goes, "Oh, he must not be able to get attention." So he rolls down his window, goes, "Here, I'll honk." So then they get your attention. <laughs> He starts honking <laughs> in the drive-thru. Then the whole place looks at me. And I'm outside going like this. I'm like, door, door, trying to signal to it. And everyone's looking at me like this. They're like, this guy's trying to break in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, someone. The other guy's pretty soon, going, help, help, help. Pretty soon, uh, everyone uh, in the line is honking. <laughs> so I'm like, what the hell? So eventually, finally, some lady figures out what I'm trying to say. She goes to the door and she goes. Oh, she couldn't figure out that you wanted to get in? No. And I mean, I guess I can see from their perspective, it was maybe a little weird. But yeah, there was like 25 people that you, could have to figure it out. She opens it. She just cracks the door and you go. she goes, oh, what's going on? And you go, I got shit so bad. <laughs> no. Parking. So she comes up. She like anything. opens the door a little bit. Like a little bit. Like answering the door. Someone says no. Goes, she says they're closed. They're not serving inside anymore. And I was like, what? It's it's eight o'clock. The, the, the yeah, lights are like on. Actually. I was like, yeah. And she tries to close the door. You put your foot in there. But I'm all sure. she's got is the push bar. Okay. So, so she doesn't have, have the, any grip. So I got a handle. Have the leverage. So I grab the handle and open it up. And she oh, kind of goes, ah. and then kind of like scurries <laughs> the whole away. place was scared of you. Oh my God. Well, it's me and like four people behind. <laughs> There's some psycho outside. <laughs> trying I mean, to get like, I don't look that scary. I know, I know. But I probably had a look in my eye. I was hungry. I was trying to get a damn McDouble here. Yeah. And then so I walk in. There's no line at the register. There's a nice old lady standing there and goes, hi, what can I get for you? Oh, I you ordered. straight up barged your way in. Yeah, she kind of like tried to close the door and I just grabbed Ryan, the door handle. I wasn't taking no for it. Yeah. I was not waiting in a 30 car line to order a freaking crispy chicken sandwich at 7 o'clock at night 